Got you. Uh, while at PBS, um, the legendary publisher and editor of Jet and Ebony magazine, he passes away. Yes. You have the opportunity to speak at his funeral. Mm -hmm. um, I read that Al Sharpton, he said that you guys had a heated discussion at the funeral mm -hmm. about you referring to President Clinton as the first black president. Is that accurate? It is accurate. Um, after, really? After the service, um, uh, Al stepped to me and we had a moment. I don't know that I would call it heated. He may call it heated. Uh, and we're still, you know, still brothers and friends, I think. to the, I, I call him a friend. I think we're still brothers and friends to this day. But he did step to me uh, because it was at the funeral of John Johnson. Um, so uh, Bill Clinton eulogized uh, John H. Johnson, uh, the founder and publisher of Ebony and Jet magazines. Bill Clinton eulogized him. I eulogized him. Jesse Jackson eulogized him. And Bill Gray, former congressman, eulogized him. So there were basically four eulogists. Uh, and I was speaking just in advance of Bill Clinton. And so I made the joke about the fact that Tony Morrison, again, had called him the first African-American president. John H. Johnson was from Arkansas. Bill Clinton was from Arkansas. And so I sort of made this joke. And when I told the joke, I said, let me let me just, you know, do what I got to do now so I can make room for the first black president of these United States, uh, as Tony Morrison once said. And the audience just fell out with laughter. It was a funny moment. The audience got it. Here, Bill Clinton was about to speak. He loved it. It was a funny moment. Uh, I was trying to bring some levity uh, to this very uh, difficult service for many of us who loved uh, and regarded uh, so highly John H. Johnson. And for whatever reason, you know, Al didn't like it. Everybody else laughed. I guess he didn't like it. And again, I was quoting Tony Morrison. Um, and so he stepped to me afterwards and, you know, we, we had words uh, about it, but that was it for me. I left it. I left it right there. Um, and I think people are entitled to their opinions. Um, but you never going to step to me and think I'm not going to respond with all due respect. And so we had words, but that was it. And un until you raise it just now, I ain't thought about it since it happened. And that was probably 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was. Um, uh, but it was a moment, but again, you, here's what, here's what I believe. Um, I believe that black people have to learn how to disagree without being disagreeable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. That doesn't mean we got to fall out about it. So he had his say, I had my say, and as they say, life goes on. Okay. It, 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 those words are very true in your world. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go somewhere else with the conversation. Sure. Um, while on PBS, you hosted uh, then a, a senator from Chicago, mm -hmm. Barack Obama. You had him on your show before he became president. And I want to say you did a, 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 a total of about six interviews. That's correct. With um, Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So clearly you have love for this man. Exactly. Um, and, and to quote you, and I'm actually going to quote you, you said, I love and adore Obama. Mm-hmm. But you have been very, very outspoken with your opinions about Barack Obama and the way he has handled some things within the black community. Obviously, you started off as friends. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that you guys are still friends to this day if you want to categorize mm -hmm. it that way. Like you said, we have to learn to, to agree even though we're unagreeable, mm -hmm. if I got that correct. What changed? Yeah. So I'm not sure anything really changed. Um, he is who he is and I am who I am. I don't know that anything changed. Uh, we talked a number of times on the phone uh, during the campaign. Uh, I saw him once or twice on the campaign trail. Uh, as you said, I, I knew him long before the rest of the nation got to know him. Uh, he worked with me in my foundation, the Tavis Spiley Foundation that works with young people on youth leadership development. He was involved with me uh, in my in my philanthropic works. I've known him for years. And uh, the short answer is this. Great presidents aren't born, they're made. Great presidents have to be pushed into their greatness. And I believe, excuse me, that left to their own devices, they end up being garden variety politicians rather than growing into what it means to be a statesman. And so every time Barack Obama and I would talk during the campaign, I would say to him, brother, don't sell your soul, don't surrender your soul, and don't let them steal your soul. At whatever cost, you have to protect your soul. And we would end every conversation. He'd say, Tabish, you do what you got to do, 
and I'm going to do what I got to do. So he was running for president. His job was to get elected. My job was to hold him accountable to the best interest of our people. And that's what I did. But he understood that. And every conversation always closed with those words. You do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. That was fine for me. Um, and so when I said a moment ago, the great presidents aren't born, they're made. They have to be pushed into their greatness. Let me convince you of that right quick. There is no Abraham Lincoln if there's no Frederick Douglass pushing him into his greatness. Lincoln starts out on the wrong side of the slavery question, on the wrong yep. side. But Frederick yep. Douglass pushes Abraham Lincoln and Lincoln becomes a great president. There is no FDR if there's no A. Philip Randolph pushing FDR into his greatness. FDR one day said to A. Philip Randolph, if you want me to do X, Y, and Z, go out there and make me do it. Make me do it. Push me. Hold me accountable. That's what FDR says to A. Philip Randolph, and Randolph did that. There is no LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, if there is no MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. MLK pushes LBJ into his greatness. And all that I was trying to do or will ever try to do with any president is to do my part to push them into their greatness. And that means you have to hold them accountable to the best interest of your people. So I love Barack Obama then, I love him now. I voted for him not once, but twice, like everybody else I know. And there are two of the proudest moments of my life, going into the polls, into the booth, to vote for Barack Obama. But that does not mean that as, as a supporter of Barack Obama, that I don't get a chance to hold him accountable to the best interest of my people. And at the end of the day, I don't care how much you love Barack Obama, when he was president, he was the head of the American empire. There is no way that you can be black and not have a critique of the American empire. You have to have a critique of the American empire. And so whoever is running that empire must always uh, be willing to hear the critique of those of us who built this nation and made it what it is. Du Bois once asked the question, would America have been America without her Negro people? There is no America without the contributions of African Americans. And so I believe that if you vote for somebody, you have the right to hold them accountable in love, not out of hatred, not out of jealousy, but you're holding them accountable in love. Nobody wants to be in a relationship with another person where nobody's being held accountable. There, account, there, there is honor. There is honor in accountability. So I didn't hate on Barack Obama then. I'm not hating on him now. My job was just to hold him accountable to the best interest of our people. Sadly, there were black folk at that time who didn't understand that. I think now with the, with the, with the advantage of history, with the advantage of time, people see better what I was attempting to do. Uh, because you look, you, you look, you, you look at the, the race some years ago, a few years ago, and you got Kamala Harris running for president. You got Cory Booker running for president. We were not afraid to hold them accountable. There's a reason why they didn't get the nomination. And Joe Biden did. And black people made that happen. It was because Obama was the first who had a real shot at winning. And I give great respect to Jesse Jackson and Shirley Chisholm and others. But Obama had a real shot at winning this thing. And so there were people who didn't want me to say anything to critique him or hold him accountable. But again, as long as you're the head or want to be the head of the American empire, there are some tough questions you have to ask or answer rather uh, that black people need to be asking. So it was never about hate then. It ain't about hate now. I love the brother. I supported him. I voted for him, but I do not regret and never will doing my small part to try to hold him accountable to the best interest of black people and never let him or anybody else get away with pushing an agenda that is antithetical to the best interest of our people. Got you. Um, you know, you have a very, very loyal and strong base within the African-American community. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama is beloved mm. within this African American community. Mm -hmm. So was there any moment where you said, I need to pump the brakes? I, I, I am going against the very constituency that I, I built 30 years of, of acquiring. I, I, I am speaking against a man that I know 
this community loves. Mm -hmm. Just as I love and adore, they love this man. Mm -hmm. And and I want to read to you some quotes because you you were very, very direct and you said things that I, I don't think a lot of people uh would have been bold enough to say. Mm -hmm. I know you're like you 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 have to push people to their greatness and you have to hold them accountable. But you said things and, and this is a quote. Mm -hmm. Um black people have lost ground under Obama in every single major economic category. You also said, um, I'm telling you. This is the damnation of black people. We're going to slip down a slope into hell if we start thinking we can give any leader a pass on addressing black issues. Mm -hmm. um, you've also said he hasn't measured up. Opportunity after opportunity, he's had to be pushed and pulled, um, begged to use the bully pulpit to address the, the deaths of people like Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. um, Michael Brown, mm -hmm. Eric Garner. Those are very, very strong comments. And I know you had to know by me saying this, I am putting myself in the line of fire with the very people who support me. Why was it so important for you to be that blunt, that direct, and that straightforward? Short answer is because I love my people. Mm. I love black people. And when you love people, you tell them the truth. And it doesn't mean that in that particular moment, they can even process or accept the truth that you're telling them, but you tell them the truth. And I'm the first to admit that I don't have a monopoly on the truth. I recognize, Brother Sean, that there is the truth and there is the way to the truth. And so everybody has not arrived at the same place I've arrived and I'm not where others are. Because again, there's the truth and there's the way to the truth. And you gotta be humble enough as I am to acknowledge that you don't have a monopoly on the truth. I get that. But the truth that you do know, you are responsible for telling it and sharing it with your people. My, my mantra is very simple. I seek the truth. I speak the truth. I stand on the truth. And I stay with the truth. The truth does not need any defense. If we had the time and we don't, um, but some other day, uh, we could sit and just dissect the quotes that you read. There is nothing in those quotes that you just read that is untrue. During the era of Obama, black people lost ground economically. That is a fact. Uh, when it comes to Trayvon Martin, the president had to do uh, two or three different statements on Trayvon Martin before he finally got it right. He finally said, if I had a son, he'd be Trayvon Martin. But go back and check the record. There were African-American leaders. I was not invited. I was not included. But there were African-American leaders who went to the White House and met with the president and told him he needed to say something stronger on this case of this young boy named Trayvon Martin who was killed in Florida. And then he came out with a different statement. So there's nothing in those quotes you read that isn't true. It doesn't mean Barack Obama is a bad man. Uh, it doesn't mean he's a bad person. It means he's human. It means he didn't get it right the first time. It means, as I said earlier, you got to push presidents into their greatness. And if you're holding somebody accountable, it doesn't mean you're hating on them. I don't hate Barack Obama. I just love my people. And I am never going to stand by idly when I think there are people who are not serving us as well as they can or should. Again, doesn't mean that they don't like us. Doesn't mean they're hating on us any more than I dislike or, 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 or can be accused of disliking or hating on them. All I'm saying is, if you're going to represent black people, then represent. You know, if you're going to be regarded as the first black president, then throw down for black people. That's all I'm saying. Other people uh, come to the White House with their own agendas and they get what they want. Barack Obama evolved on gay marriage. And the gay community got what they wanted. Um, the Jewish community always gets what they want. Wall Street got what they wanted. The environmentalists got what they wanted. Well, I'll be doggone if I'm going to be quiet when it comes to the best interest of black people. Again, any president is the head of the American empire. And I am not pushing. I, I didn't push Barack Obama any harder than I pushed Bill Clinton. I didn't push Barack Obama any harder than I pushed Daddy Bush or Baby Bush or Donald Trump. I did not push Barack Obama any harder right now than I'm pushing Joe Biden. Tune in to KBLA Talk 1580. Listen to my show three hours every day and listen to my commentary about how, Barack, how uh, Joe Biden is not being as progressive as he ought to be. 
I love the fact that you appointed a black woman to the Supreme Court, a black woman to the Federal Reserve, a black woman as UN ambassador. All those things are beautiful. Symbolism has its place, but so does substance. And I push Joe Biden almost every day on a substantive agenda for black people. Our people just weren't prepared to hear that kind of critique of the first black president. I get it. I understand it. I was never naive about it, but it did not allow me to abrogate my responsibility um, to tell the truth that I did know at that time.